Hey guys, I'm back again, just giving an update on all the fun things that I've been up to the last couple weeks. So it's been busy and it's going by so fast and the last time I vlogged was probably about two weeks ago. <clears throat> so it's hard for me to remember everything that I've done, but I'm going to do my best. So the last vlog that I left off on, um, I had gone to the opera with my friends and then had gone to high tea with Emma the next day at the QVB. And then it was another fun week of doing housework and kind of hanging out, doing some things with the kids. And then it was time for my weekend again. So that Saturday, I didn't really have any plans, um, but there was this cat cafe that I really, really wanted to go to. I've always wanted to go to one. So I made it a goal to go to this. So I went to Surrey Hills, which is over by Central Station, and went to Catmosphere Cat Cafe. Um, I paid for a one hour session in this cat room. It had like 13 or 14 cats, and they gave you a drink, a coffee, and you sat around and pet these cats for an hour and played with them and had fun. And I loved it because as most of you know, I miss my animals quite a bit. So it was great to kind of curl up and cuddle with the cats. Uh, probably will go back. Um, they have a kitten room with the little playful kittens, which that'll probably be my next one that I go to. So I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, I'm not quite a crazy cat lady, but I do like my critters. And then after the cat cafe, I met Emma, who I talk about in every, every vlog. And Emma and I went to Vapiano's, which is one of my favorite restaurants. And we ate there for lunch. And then after lunch, she went to an opera tour and I went to finally, finally do my bridge climb experience. So I signed up and paid and my mom had gotten a gift voucher for Christmas. So um, I got to finally do that, which was an, a, a crazy experience. So you sign up for this time slot I picked the 315 and you wait in this area and then they bring you into another area once your time slot is called. In that area, you basically sign over your life saying you have no medical issues um, or concerns that they would need to know while you're up there and you sign your waiver and then they actually give you a breathalyzer. So here in Australia, in order to climb the bridge, you have to be under a 0.05 to climb, which I hadn't had any alcohol, so I was fine. But it makes sense why you would have to have a breathalyzer before climbing. So then after that, you're brought into the next room, and that's where you get your suit. So you have to wear these standard suits. And so everyone basically gets these and goes into these changing rooms, and you strip down to nothing, so other than your bra and your underwear, and you put these suits on and zip them up. So they had all these clips and things that you could attach things, which I'll talk about here in a second. So then after that, you have to take everything off, like no watches, um, you could have earrings, anything that had the potential of falling off of you, you couldn't bring, like you couldn't bring any metal of any sort because then you go through a metal detector and they check and make sure you're not trying to sneak anything up because obviously it's a potential hazard if something were to happen. So after the metal detector, you meet your guide who's going to be walking the bridge with you. Ours was so funny. He was hilarious. He kept like saying dad jokes basically the whole time. I really liked him. Um, so then after that, he took us into the harness room. So they have all these harnesses set up and you just step in, pull them up, bring them around your waist, and then he pulls the top strap around shows you a strap that you're linked in with. Um, and it's actually all really cool how it all works. So then after you got your cool little harness on, they bring you over to another section and they clip a rain jacket on you because it was kind of overcast that day. So they wanted to make sure, you know, if it was gonna rain, we were prepared. So they clip that on you and then you go get a hanky because you can't bring any tissues. And thankfully I had some allergies. So I was like, thank goodness for this hanky. And then they give you a hat that they also clip to your suit. Um, and then after you have all those kind of gear things, then they bring you over to this microphone area and then hook you up with an audio set. 
and run that around you so you have headphones so you can listen and hear your guide while you're up on the bridge. So this probably took a good hour to get all suited up and prepared and ready. And then they took us through a simulation thing um, to teach us how to climb the ladders because you can only have one person on one section at a time, which obviously makes sense. Um, so we did that and then it was finally time. So they got us hooked in onto the wire and then we started our climb. So you start off underneath the bridge and as a group of, I believe it was about 10 of us, you kind of just start making your way and your tour guide's talking and people are looking at you because they can see you over by the rocks. And so they're watching you in your funny blue hat and silly uniform. And so you're walking around and then you climb up these ladders right in between lanes of traffic, essentially. And so you walk up these ladders all the way to the top and then you're finally on the arch part. And once you, we got up to the arch, our tour guide, you know, he talked to us and said, oh, hey, where are you from? What are you doing here? How long are you here for? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was really cool because we had somebody from Perth. We had some people from the United States. So we, you just slowly make your way to the top and he tells you more. I mean, a cruise ship was actually going out at the same time. So we got to see that and that was pretty cool. And he just pointed out these really cool areas and you just get a really good view of the city. And thankfully it didn't rain when we were there. So that was awesome because that was kind of my fear booking that day because it is non-refundable. So then after we kind of made our way, you loop around and go to the other side of the bridge. And of course stopping along to take all these pictures. Um, and then you make your way down. So all in all, the start to finish, it was probably about three hours that I was ready and suited up for this. So, um, and once you got back down, you just kind of stripped and changed and picked up your pictures and away you went. Um, highly recommend anyone that comes to Sydney to do the bridge climb because it's amazing. My one regret is not doing it sooner. I should have done it right when I got here because Things would have been so new and fresh, and I think I would have been more amazed than I was. Um, and the whole reason why I wanted to do the bridge climb and come to Australia is because of the Mary-Kate and Ashley movie. I believe it's called Our Lips Are Sealed. Um, go out and watch it. Um, it's like they're in this witness protection program and end up coming to Australia. And I think that's where I fell in love with Australia and wanted to do this bridge climb. So... Thanks, Mary-Kate and Ashley, for that. Much appreciated. So, highly recommend it. Go out and do it if you get a chance to come here to Sydney. So then after the bridge climb, Emma and I met up again, and we went to Starbucks because that seems to be what where we always end up. But then we went and walked around the opera house a little bit. I had to take a picture with my cousin's flat Stanley that he sent me. So I have a wonderful picture of me in front of the opera house with that. And then we went to the Darling Harbor fireworks. So literally all of my time here and all of Emma's time here, we're like, we got to get to the fireworks. And I think we've had plans to do it, but they'd either be canceled because of weather or the bushfires or whatnot. So we finally got a chance to go and it was great. It was wonderful to finally, finally get a chance to see it. And then we went to KFC because KFC here in Australia is so much better than the States. So we hung out there and then we came back home to our houses and got ready for Sunday. So Sunday, Emma wasn't feeling the greatest, so we weren't like really super adventurous, but we went over to Watson's. They got famous fish and chips there from, I think it's called Doyle's. Apparently it's very famous, Emma said. And we just walked around there. We went to this area called The Gap. Um, it's this beautiful cliffside area that just kind of drops off into the ocean. Unfortunately, it is a place where a lot of people do commit suicide. Um, so it was kind of eerie going there and knowing that. Um, but it is a very beautiful area. And it's unfortunate that um, people that are struggling decide that is the place to do it. Um, but then we kept walking around Watson's Bay and ended up at this really pretty cliff area. 
um, where Emma wanted to see this lighthouse, so we took some pictures there. And basically that's all it was. Um, I think we might have gone back to a Starbucks then that afternoon just to like kind of figure out some logistical things for our upcoming weekends on my computer. Um, yeah, and then it was already time for another week, which is insane because I feel like the weeks fly by. In the moment, not so much, but looking back, it's like, wow, I feel like I just got here. So nothing too exciting, another week. Rasheen was sick, like all week. Thankfully, not the coronavirus, but she was sick. Um, so kind of changed up things, didn't really get a chance to go to dance and do some paperwork and things that I got to get done. But thankfully, she's feeling better now. So for we were worried for her for that week. But the week went by fast. And next thing you know, it was already another weekend. And so this past weekend was Mardi Gras here in Sydney. So everyone back in the States, you think Mardi Gras, you think New Orleans, you think um, purple and gold and green. That's what I thought when I first heard Mardi Gras. Wrong. Mardi Gras here is their pride festival. So basically, like, take pride and take it, like, three levels up. It's so intense. So Roisin thankfully did my makeup for Pride Festival, so I looked awesome. Thank you. And shout out to her Instagram page. Go to Little Miss Moi on Instagram, and you can follow all of her makeup tips and tidbits and looks that she does for dance. I'm featured on there with my Pride look. Um, but Emma and I went to Pride and got all dolled up. We went to the factory outlets first in Homebush, which thankfully I didn't buy anything because I don't need to spend any more money. I did have to wear my makeup to the factory outlets, so people kind of gave me weird looks, but what can you do? I was rocking it, so that's all that matters. But Emma came over, we got ready, put makeup on, got dressed, and took some really cute photos because the lighting was fantastic. And then we went over to Oxford Street, which is in like Darlinghurst area in Sydney. And that is where the madness was. There were so many people, thousands and thousands, I'm sure, lined up on this parade route. And people had to have gotten there super early because they had police barricades and they were probably like five deep already everywhere. So we walked around, took some pictures. Um, I wish I could document all the outfits that I saw because or more, I should say, the lack of outfits, I should say. Um, a lot of butt cheeks, which, rocket, you do you. A lot of nipples. Um, but that's their festival. I'm. It was an experience, to say the least. A lot of fierce costumes and a lot of glitter. Everyone in that place had glitter on. And if you weren't wearing glitter, you clearly didn't know what you were getting yourself into. But after taking a few pictures, Emma and I found our spots. Um, they weren't the greatest, but we could see the parade. And then it was the parade. So the thing said it started at 7.30 and went till 11. And we were like, that's a long time for a parade. So we're like, there's no way. That parade lasted forever. We left after two hours because, like, our backs were hurting. And, like, we had these obnoxious girls behind us that were just like, yes, queen, after everyone which kind of got annoying, like, we're all here for, to support these people, but, like, she was a little over the top, but the parade was amazing, so each float had some sort of theme, a lot of them had drag queens on there, um, and then every float had, like, a big ensemble of people dancing behind them with these spectacular costumes and amazing songs and everyone was just so hyped up and it was just such a cool experience confetti was everywhere glitter was everywhere um just amazing i loved it it was such a cool first pride experience um emma and i were kind of stressed out though because it's like it's very overwhelming and you get tired really fast there were a lot of drunk people and thankfully, Emma and I were not one of them because people were, like, throwing up in the bushes at 9.30 at night, which, that's so early in the night. 
But then Emma came over for a sleepover and actually got to meet my host family here. So that was cool. And then the next day we got up and um, we planned to go to Bondi Iceberg. So you've probably heard me talk about Bondi Beach before, but they have this like famous pool that's like the most Instagram worthy area. So we had a lunch there, which I had a steak burger, which was really good with some fries. And it's just so beautiful there. The water's so blue. And we took our famous Instagram photos there that you have to take at the icebergs. Um, and then we went for a swim. And let me tell you, there's a reason why they call it the Bondi Icebergs. That water was so cold. Um, apparently, this is like one of the only pools that's open in the winter. And people have to wear like wetsuits to swim in it. It's so freezing cold. And it was like, I mean, it's technically autumn here now, but... Burr, I was freezing. And so we swam around a little bit and then we laid out on our towels. That's really about all we did that day. Nothing like super exciting. Um, I read some books, just chatted as Emma and I usually do. And then we came back into the city and lo and behold, met at another Starbucks and we read for about an hour or so of our books. And that was basically it, and here we are another week. So today's Wednesday, and my week's basically over because tomorrow I leave for New Zealand. So thankfully my host family um, were able to work out um, a time when I could get off for Thursday, Friday. And so I'm going to fly into Queenstown, New Zealand, and go there for like four days and see what New Zealand's all about. So that'll be my next vlog, talking about my extreme adrenaline adventure, because apparently Queenstown is known for adrenaline, so we'll see how rowdy I get. Probably not too rowdy, but we'll see. So that's my next adventure, just a little over a month, and it's insane. They found another au pair, which one of the au pairs actually canceled, the one that was going to come, she canceled. So then they, it was a quick scramble to find another au pair. So a girl that's already here in Sydney, she's doing farm work. She's coming to live with them um, like my last week. So we'll be overlapping. So I'll be here teaching her kind of the tricks and of the trade and teaching her different things that I've learned while I've been here. So it's insane to think that I'll be home soon. So I'm sure I'll be watching this vlog in a couple weeks going, wow, if only I knew how quick it was going to go. So thanks for taking along and hope you guys are still sticking with me as I finish out my last month here in Australia.